Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zach and I am the New York City coding and tech tutor. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a maze game in Scratch. Um, this is, uh, I would call this like an intermediate level um, project. Um, good for maybe fourth grade, fifth grade, or even teens and adults who are brand new to Scratch. Um, so let me show you how we make it. Sharing my screen. All right, so once you're logged into Scratch, you're gonna press create to start a new project. And you're gonna get rid of this cat sprite. And the first sprite you're gonna need is a maze sprite. So for that, we're actually going to, um, actually gonna go to another website and we're gonna search for maze maker in Google. And when you're in Maze Maker, you're going to find do, 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 it's this website that I like, hereandabove.com. So I'm clicking there. And you can play around with this, but I'm going to tell you right now that the that good numbers to put in here are a width of 9, a height of 7, and a path width of 45. That'll work out pretty well. I'm going to generate the maze. Now I have a maze. I want to use this maze in my Scratch project. So I'm going to right click on a um, PC, or if your PC doesn't have a right click, you can try a two finger click, which is the equivalent of a right click on a lot of PCs. Or if you're on a Mac, you can do a control click. Or on a Chromebook, I believe it's also a control click. So I am going to save image as. I'm going to, I already have one there, but I'm gonna override. I'm gonna save it in the downloads folder of my computer. So I'm pressing save. And then I'm gonna go back to my scratch project. And I'm gonna to go to here to choose a sprite. And I'm gonna upload a sprite or an image to use as a sprite. There it is in my downloads folder. Max have downloads folders too. I'm pressing open and yay, now I have a maze. It's a little too, it's not big enough. So I'm gonna change the size here to 200. Okay, and that's pretty good. Um, all right, so another thing I want to do, this maze is, you can see it's like actually got a lot of white um, around it. I actually want to not have any, have this white. So I'm going to now go into costumes for the maze. And I'm going to choose a color, but the color I'm going to choose is transparent. So I'm choosing this red line. And I'm going to paint bucket on the white. And now, the um, the maze is truly transparent, and you'll see why that it's that's important in a little bit. Now then, another one one thing to note that once you've made it transparent, the maze becomes a little bit hard to move around. So I have to click right on the black line in order to move the maze around. And it looks like I got a little bit of uh, some some white still on there, which maybe I'll just get rid of right now. Okay. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing it to be safe. Okay. All right, cool. Now I've got a maze, and now I need to make someone that can move around the maze. So I'm going to draw my, um, I'm gonna draw, you can either draw a character or choose a character. I'm just gonna choose a character, maybe a fantasy character. And I think all this hippo will do. All right, so this hippo will be who I am. And the hippo is too big. He needs to fit within the uh, walls of the maze. So maybe like 30. Mm, that's pretty good. Maybe 25. Remember, it can be pretty small because if you when you play the game full screen, it won't look so tiny. So it's only going to look a little tiny right here. All righty. He kind of fits. I'm gonna, just to be safe, I'll make him 20. All right. Cool. All right. Now we need to make him move around. So to make him move what we're going to do is we're going to do four of these win space key pressed blocks one two three four we're going to do up arrow down arrow left arrow and right arrow so the our main character is going to move around with the arrow keys on your keyboard so when the up arrow on my keyboard is pressed, I want him to point 
in direction. So I'm pointing in direction. It's a blue block. I want him to point. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see. Um, I want him to point up. Uh, when he's, uh, when you press down, point in direction, click on the 90, make him point down. Left arrow, point in direction, click on the 90, I want him to point left. And right arrow, point in direction, it's already on right. Got it. So if I, if you look at him now, now I'm pushing the arrow keys. He's pointing in different directions. That's good. Now he goes upside down when I point when I do left. Uh, if you don't want him to go upside down, um, if you don't want him to like change as much when he changes direction, you can click on the direction button over here, and then there's like looks like two arrows pointing at each other. This will make it so he doesn't spin as much when he's changing direction. So like right now he's actually pointing down, but he doesn't actually animate as if he's pointing down. Okay, so pointing now, obviously pointing is not enough. He also needs to move. So I'm just going to add a move 10 block to every single one of these. Okay, uh, so now if I push arrow keys, yay, he's moving. But he's going through walls. That's a problem. So, um, I need to, when he touches a wall, I need to he needs to know that he's touching a wall and do something to prevent himself from going through that wall. And what he's going to do, the way we're going to do it, is we're going to add an if statement under every single one of these movement, um, under every single one of these uh, arrow key scripts. And when I press, when he is touching color black, so I do this touching color and then I click on here, and then I click on the dropper right here and I capture the black of the maze right there. If he's touching that color black, he needs to move minus 10. Now, why is it minus 10? It's minus 10 because he's still going to move forward first before he realizes that he's touching the black. Then he's going to realize that he's touching the black and he's going to undo his 10 steps that he moved forward. And that will effectively make it so that he can't go through walls. So if I right click or control click or double or two finger click on this, I can duplicate it. And I guess I should have done that before I did put the if statements on. But I can duplicate it, and then I can duplicate it, and then I can duplicate it. And now he can't go through walls. He can just walk around the maze. Cool. All right, next we need some bad guys. So I'm going to do two bad guys. You can add more bad guys if you want. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do two bad guys, but you'll um, you'll be able to add. I think the game's probably better with like three or four bad guys. But for the video, I'm only going to add. I'm only going to show you how to make two. All right, so I'm going to again choose a, choose a bad guy. Maybe this dragon. And he's way too big, so I'm going to shrink him. Maybe size 30. Even smaller, 20. All right, and so this bad guy is going to lurk. Um, I think he will lurk in, let's see. I guess he can hide out in this hallway. Why, how, about, how about he hides out in this hallway right here, this long hallway right here. All right, so for that, I'm going to do um, green flag. Or on the and I'm in the dragon. I'm doing green flag, and he's going to do something forever. The green flag is going. The dragon is going to do something forever. He's going to forever go back and forth. The first place he's going to glide to is where he is right now, which is negative one nine three negative one four one. Those are the coordinates of the dragon right now where he is. So I'm going to go to the this glide block, and you can see the numbers are actually already there for me. X Y. If they're not there, you can type them. Just copy them from where he just move from where you want them to be and copy the numbers. So that's the first place he's gliding to. And the second place he's gliding to are right here. Is right here. So again, 185, negative 141. The numbers are already there for me. I put it in. Lovely. Now if I press green flag, 
he's gliding. He's gliding way too fast. That's going to be an impossible game. So I want him to glide. I don't know. Maybe he'll glide. Um, the first maybe he'll 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 be slow gliding one direction and maybe like fast gliding the other. Yeah, maybe not so fast. Okay, so he takes his sweet time to go there. Um, he takes six seconds to go one way. Takes four seconds to come back. All right. And if you want, you can also put point in dirt before he glides one way. You can make him point in the direction you want. Again, turn off the thing that spins him, and then you can make him point there. So now he's looking that way when he's gliding, and he's looking that way when he's gliding. Awesome. All right. Now then, uh, we need the game to be over if um, if you touch, or we need to send, we need to make the, um, your, your character go back to start if he touches this bad guy. So let's do that. Go to your good guy and let's do a green flag forever with an if inside. So this means forever check, always be checking if something is true. Always check, like check, if is it true, check, 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 basically like a million times a second. Check if something is true. What do we want to always be checking? Whether What do we want to always be checking? Well, we want to always be checking whether or not this hippo, which I'm in right now, is touching this block right here, the Boolean block. Boolean block is the shape. Is it touching? Boolean just means returning true or false. See, right now it's false. He's not touching the mouse pointer, so it's returning false. So is it touching? The dragon. If it is touching the dragon, I want this hippo to go to where he is right now, 185, negative 141. All right. So press green. I have to press green flag to start this because it's it's a green flag, and the forever loop will not start checking unless the green flag is is clicked. So now you can see it's lighting up, which means this script is running all the time. These scripts don't have these scripts are not lit up because they are only they only happen when I press an arrow. So you might press the arrow, you can see it, it's you can see it's lighting up. All right, I'm going to test. I'm just going to test this out first. You know the way you would the way you really would play this game is you would have to wait until the dragon is here and you'd have to like kind of go like this and then you get up here. But really, I just want to see. Ooh, okay, that didn't work. What did I do wrong? Didn't put the right coordinates, I guess. Let's see. Stop. All right. For some reason, the coordinates were not updated correctly. Let's try that again. One Right now, the hippo's in 143, 143, XY. All right, let's test it out again. There, it worked. OK. Um, so that was, that was some trouble. That was, uh, some debugging that you saw there. All right. So that works. Now, if I were making this game, like the full, making the entire game right now for this video, I would definitely add some more bad guys. Maybe the bad guys that go through walls or you could, they can go between any points, maybe a bad guys that move between like a whole lot of points instead of just, um, this coordinate and this coordinate, this set of coordinates and this sort of set of coordinates. Maybe it's a more complicated set. Um, path that the bad guys are moving around through. But I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I'm going to do one more bad guy that moves in a completely different way. I'm going to choose a sprite. I think for this bad guy, I will choose this bat. Um, bat is too big. Let's try 50. All right, cool. Maybe even 40. All right. And this bad guy is just going to move around randomly. So I'm going to do green flag forever. glide to random position. Maybe every three seconds, this bat's going to glide to a random position. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can see the bat is choosing new X and Y coordinates every three seconds. All right. So that's just going to be a bad guy that moves around in that sort of randomized way. 
but we need to make sure that the same thing happens when I touch this bad guy as happens when I touch the dragon. So I'm going to right click or control click or two finger click um, on this. Duplicate it. I've duplicated the whole thing. But instead of this dragon, I'm going to change it to bat. And now let's just test it out. Get me bat. Test it out. Nice. It works. All right. So that is those are two that's two different kinds of bad guys that you can create. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to make a key and a door. And you can make multiple doors and multiple keys if you want. This is how you make a key and a door. I'm going to paint a sprite. I'm going to put it on bitmap mode, which is what I always do when I'm working with kids. I always remind tell them to put click don't draw vector mode's cool, but it's a little more complicated, so let's just stick to uh, bitmap mode for now. I'm going to choose this um, rectangle. I'm going to put it on black. It needs to be this. It needs to be black because it needs to be the same color as the walls. Otherwise, your hippos can just walk right through the door. I'm just going to do a rectangle like this. Okay, that works. Then I'm going to shrink it over here. Maybe make it make it a good size. And maybe this door will be right here. So the hippo will not be able to get if you if we test it out. We just test it out. See, the hippo can't go through the door. All right. How's the door going to disappear? Well, for that, we need a key. I'm going to search for a key sprite. Look, they already have a key for me. You can draw your own if you want. OK, make the key smaller. Put the key over here. And for the key, I'm going to write a script. I'm going to write a script that the key needs to all, just like the dragon was always checking whether or not I'm sorry, just like the hippo was always checking whether or not it was touching the dragon. Well, the key is going to always check if it's touching the hippo. So for again, that's a forever with an if inside. And that's forever means forever checking if. What is it forever checking if? It's forever checking if it's touching Boolean block, touching the hippo. Okay? If it is touching the hippo, I want it to send an invisible broadcast, an invisible message out to so that the door knows to disappear. The way we do that is we do something called broadcast. Broadcast is under events and which is yellow and it's right here. Broadcast a message. What message do I want? Well I can use any message I any, any it doesn't actually matter what I type here. It could be anything. Um, I could I could stick with message one but that's not very descriptive. So I'm gonna call it make write my new message and we'll call it um, open door. All right, open door. Okay, how does the how does open door make the door disappear? Well, the door sprite which doesn't have a name. Maybe I should call it door here. I typed in door here just so it doesn't. It's not called sprite one because all my other ones have nice names. So this is door, and it is going to receive the broadcast when I receive open door. When it receives this invisible broadcast message from key. It's going to take that invisible broadcast message and know what to do with it. It's going to, under looks, it's going to hide. All right, let's test it out. I'm going to cheat a little bit so that we can, let's pretend that I actually got all the way over here, but I can't get into past the door yet. Well, I got to run over here and boop, I touch the key. Ooh, maybe we want the key to disappear, hide just like the door. So for that, if we want the key to also hide, Probably put a hide block in here too. There. Now the key is hide also hid when touched by the hippo. All right, cool. Now then, let's say I die. Let's say I die. Okay. And I press stop. And I want to play the game again. I start the game again. Oh no, the key and the door are not coming back when I started the game over again. Well, for that, we just need to make sure that when I um to fix that, we just do green flag. Green flag show. Green flag show for the door. This means that when I press green flag, meaning when I start the game, these things are showing. So that just that's like just making sure that the game is easily replayable. Okay. Um, so let's test it out again. Let's cheat. Move him over here. Cheating, cheating, cheating. There, it works. Beautiful. Now if I press green flag. Starts the game over. Oh, it doesn't really start the game over. You know what else we need? The hippo. The hippo needs to 
go. The hippo needs to, when I press green flag, go to its starting position, which is up here. Which is just also going to make sure the game is easily replayable. And again, the hippo is not updating. Let's see. I gotta make sure that this these numbers negative one eighty three match. So sometimes it doesn't update negative one eighty three. No, it's still not. Let's see. All right. So if it doesn't update, then you gotta do the numbers yourself. So one forty seven, one forty. Put it there. All right. Let's pretend I'm cheating again. I restart the game. No, not negative one forty seven. One forty seven. There, cool. All right, let's cheat again. Come on. Boom. Now then, if I want to restart the game, game restarts. And that is pretty much it. Now this is like, this game could definitely be more interesting because you can add more bad guys, more keys, you know. Uh, but what you have right here is, it is the basic, beginnings of a game. Um, if you want, you can add some color to your game, your backdrop. Remember I said I wanted to be able to see through my maze. We remember the very first thing we did, we erased that white. Well, that was that's because if you go to your backdrop, you go here, you can paint bucket like something that looks cool here. All right, you can make a cool background for your maze, for your game. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please uh, visit codingtutor.nyc for more fun videos and more um, tech tutorials. And uh, have a good night. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.